Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. It is review day for the Remington Model 1875. Uh, this is a replica air gun, of course. Six shot. Uh, uses the, you know, bullet type cartridges. Load your pellets into the back. Or BBs. It is a dual ammo gun, after all. It comes with uh, six um, pellet shells and six BB shells. Of course, I bought a lot of extra pellet shells. I'm still not going to shoot BBs through this thing. Um, I don't want to, even though it's a smooth bore. Um, but I am loving this gun. Now, the initial crony test we did on this, it didn't seem to be all that hot, but still it was pretty good. Gas usage didn't seem to be that great either. But I've had a chance to run a few bottles of gas and a lot of rounds through this thing. And I'm getting almost 60 shots per bottle out of this thing. And they're all really good, strong shots too, which is nice. Um, so it does make really good use of the gas. Um, but um, anyways, this one's got like a ivory type handle. I really like it. Uh, chrome as well. Really loving the chrome. Um, the, uh, the gun, you have to actually cock it uh, into the one position. Um, uh, basically, it's a half cock. And, of course, you can open the loader gate any day, anytime you want. But that is the only way you can rotate the cylinder by hand, is it has to be half cocked first. And then, of course, you go fully cocked to, to do the full cycle and fire the gun. Now, I've got this thing set up with three uh, Crossman pointed Premier 7.4 grain pellets and I got three um, sport I guess they call them excite sports um, five and a half grain uh, wad cutters so we're gonna basically go three shots of each over the crony and um, see how the gun is actually doing now compared to my first crony test and of course because this is a review we're also going to sit at the bench with this thing and talk about it and let you in on everything that I found out about this gun so I will zoom in on the crony for you guys uh, so you get a good look at the numbers there. Now if I got my order right, we should be firing off the uh, lead pellets first. Error two already? I haven't even fired nothing, come on. I wonder if my batteries are starting to get weak. Throw a little bit of extra light in there. Error two. I've had this happen before. Let's try that again. That, oh, I know what the problem is. Stupid block of wood. Forgot about that. There we go. All right. Got to remember to move the other block of wood off the back sensor. Shot number one. 412. Now this thing is rated for up to 450. Error two. Set the crony. Now we should be shooting hyper pellets. Four eleven. Three ninety six. Three eighty. Pretty respectable. I believe that is all of our shots. Yep, that's it. We are empty. Okay. So it's definitely doing, I think, a little bit better. I'd have to go recheck my first video, but I think it's doing better this time. Now, the hyper pellets I'm using, they do fit a little on the tight side uh, on pretty much every gun. Um, so some guns they work really well with. Other guns, they kind of work okay. And others, pretty much not really at all. Anyways, so I'm going to uh, shut off and then restart the camera. 
Okay, guys. So, um, I am actually very pleased with the gun overall. It is really nice. It's a nice weight in the hand. Uh, if you want to do your little cowboy, you know, spinning thing, you can do that with this gun. No big deal. It is definitely heavy, especially with that long barrel. Um, you know, so it's got some good length to it. Smooth bore barrel, it's fine uh, because this way you can actually shoot BBs through it or pellets. It's your choice. Um, what I've been finding for accuracy is five to eight meters seems to be the best accuracy for this gun. Um, although I do still have to try out a few more pellets in it. I've mainly been shooting the pointed pellets uh, because I want the penetration power too, right? And pointed also gives you a little bit more speed, um, even in the same weight of, say, a domed pellet or a wide cutter. They could all be the same weight, but the pointeds are going to give you the most speed, even at the same weight. It's kind of weird how it works, but it's how it works. So you've got this little button here. It looks like a screw you can push in on, and while you push and hold it, you can pull this rod out. You can actually eject the uh, the tumbler right out of the gun. Um, you also have an ejection rod system, um, so you can just go like that. Boom! Line it up right again. You know, or if they're fitting loose enough, you can just dump them out in your hand. You know, either way. And these are the shells that it uses. Uh, like I said, they do have BB shells as well. Uh, they look identical, uh, except for the back end. The seal is actually um, going to be a tighter seal for the BB ones. And I have shot pellets through the BB shells, and it does slow the gun way down. Okay, so you got to kind of pick and choose your battles, which is another reason why I bought an extra 12 rounds or so of these um, in the pellets. And I'm going to actually end up buying more of them. Uh, just so, so I have even more access and I want to try and find uh, a belt that can actually hold a lot more um, At the same time, which is kind of fun. Eventually, I think I'm gonna actually um, Put out for the uh, left-handed holster with the belt with it um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it for this gun or another gun, but probably you know, maybe even both I did order myself a new uh, Western pistol which should hopefully make it here next week uh, with any luck, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I got this thing about replica guns now that they're getting to be a really bad addiction for me. Um, but hey, you know, it's like anything else. So it does have a safety underneath. Um, so from the real gun to this gun, I mean, the safety, you're, you're likely, I don't even think there is a safety on the real Remington, I'm not sure. Um, but you do actually have one here, which is kind of a good thing. So, you know, when the safety's on, you're not going to cock it. You're not moving nothing. It's on safe. Okay. Now, where the CO2 is stored, of course, is underneath the left cover. And they do give you an Allen wrench tool that you can use to ignite your bottle and, of course, remove it after you're done. And uh, that's just as simple as... I'm doing it. Now, I am going to drain the gas out of this because those are the only six shots I'm taking out of this gun today. And I no longer store uh, gas in my guns. Um, some guns I know I still can, but a gun like this, I don't want to even chance it. Uh, because there are a lot of valve designs out there that you actually can't do long-term storage with. How you remove the gas carefully and there's our grip going to the floor all right so that's pretty cold so the pierce on the bottle I guess we'll have to let it defrost for a minute and then we can see what kind of piercing we're actually well we can see that I would say it's got a reasonably good pierce on the bottle so for the most consistent shot count, um, at least on my gun anyway, um, it's probably best to take at least 5 to 10 seconds between shots, only because this bottle is not getting a perfectly pierced hole through it. Like, there's really actually a whole hole. It's getting pierced, but it's the fill up, refill up time into the valve. Um, and I have no idea how much the valve actually holds, but I'd probably say about 5 to 10 seconds. So if your bottles do pierce, um, not like a perfect dead hole that you recognize that's actually a hole, um, then I'd go a few seconds extra between shots just so you make sure that the bottle does actually 
uh, top up your valve between shots. Um, I am going to try a different brand of CO2 in this gun um, because different brands will pierce differently. These are Crossman and Crossman have always been notorious for being very difficult to pierce even on all their own guns. Never mind other guns, a lot of them. Unless it has a very tall piercing pin, which I'm guessing this one doesn't because I had that pretty snug when I pierced it. And uh, uh, it doesn't look too bad for a piercing pin. It's uh, more flattened on the top. I'm used to seeing more of a point, which could be why it's piercing that way. So I'll have to try a different brand of ammo. Or, sorry, a different brand of CO2. But for an all-metal gun with uh, having plastic grips and the safety, I believe the safety is metal on this thing. Let me do the tooth test. Oh yeah, that's a metal safety. So the safety is definitely metal. Um, the shells are all metal, of course, other than the rubber grommets. But just plastic handles. So <laughs> really we can say this is virtually plastic free. Um, I don't know how hard it would actually be to make grips for this thing, but it, it has crossed my mind a couple of times thinking, well, maybe if I'm going to make grips for myself, um, I could do that. Um, okay, so, oh yeah, they screw it together. I guess these screws in here hold this side of the grip on. I guess that's how the, it looks like how they would do it. Anyway, um, the little tabby thing, don't break it. You know, just be gentle with it, you know, and you'll be fine. You can actually get spare parts either way. So you're fine for getting spare parts for this gun, uh, so you're not without. Um, I think anybody who's got a Remington fetish would actually really love this gun. And if you don't have a Remington fetish, you might just get one after trying one out even. Um, I, I love it. Um, I had a Crossman Shiloh uh, years ago. I actually have I've had a few of them. And... They were pretty much an all-metal gun as well, except the tumbler was plastic, uh, which made a wear and tear factor. You replace the tumbler after every so many thousand shots. Um, and it did have plastic grips on it. I think that was it for plastic on that gun. There wasn't a lot. Um, and it had an octagonal type barrel. Now it was the, 18, the, uh, the 1861 Shiloh, I think that's what it was was actually, you know, a Remington thing like this, right? Um, basically. And uh, it was a nice gun. I really like them. Um, haven't been able to find any in a long time, but if I ever find another one that's in perfect shape, I'm definitely going to snag one up. But uh, in the meantime, I do have this, and I really do actually like it a lot. And I like the maintenance capability, you know, just by even pushing the button, pulling the rod, popping the barrel out if you need to do that for you know cleaning or maybe you got to replace a part or something you can disassemble this thing very very easily um, I haven't seen the diagram yet for the teardown to see how easy it is to get this thing apart and I don't know what the guts look like inside um, other than you know a random guess um, but uh, definitely a worthwhile piece um, so if you're even a collector you know hey works you know um, I like the fact that you got also three stages here. One, two, and three. So that's actually kind of cool. The half cock thing, that keeps the realism up. You can't spin the barrel in either direction um, when it's not at half cock. Okay? Um, and I wouldn't suggest spinning it this way, uh, like counterclockwise. Uh, stick with the clockwise because there's a little pin that sits down here too that catches the bottom to, to lock. Well, I guess you, I oh, don't know, actually you, it won't let you. It won't let you uh, reverse spin the tumbler. It does stop it. So you're only going to be going in a clockwise motion uh, either way with this thing. But it is very, very nice. Um, now, the accuracy, um, like a, we were saying, um, between 5 to 8 meters, it's actually relatively good. Um, like I said, it is a smooth bore too, so shooting pellets, it's going to be better with pellets than with BBs, obviously. Um, and it does pack a good punch, you know, that's a nice thing. And the fact that I can get uh, pretty much 60 shots per bottle, that's actually really impressive. 
I don't know what happened with the first time I shot this thing for you guys over the crony. Um, but after shooting it afterwards, I didn't get very many shots. And I guess maybe it could be the break-in. Who knows? Maybe a bad bottle. That happens too. Which can explain poor crony results. But, you know, after breaking the gun in after a whack load of rounds, um, even a lot of off-camera shooting, um, the thing does great. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy and impressed with it. Um, for those of you that like your star ratings, um, I would put this at an easy, easy 4 out of 5, okay? Um, it was, uh, even the price was well under $200, um, before tax and shipping, which also a really good price. Uh, Princess Auto in Canada actually carries this for 200 and I paid, I think it was about 159 or something for this thing. Um, if I remember right, too, I'm pretty sure I got this one at DNL Air Guns. Um, but, um, definitely... A cool gun. It, it's definitely going to stick around in my collection, that's for sure. Um, does have a recessed barrel too, uh, so it gives to that added realism. You know, and it's recessed in there um, better than a half an inch as well. And it has like rifling, uh, like a real uh, caliber one would have. And when you look at the front of the barrel, I mean, you cannot tell if those are real hollow point bullets uh, or if they're fake. I mean, the realism is really there, uh, especially considering you, you load the pellet at the back, not at the front, eh? So it definitely adds to the realism. Um, and just the feel of it, the cocking. Um, it is single action, of course, so you have to cock each time. The trigger has got a bit of a pull to it, um, but it's very crisp. When it lets off, it's instant, and it doesn't take a lot, you know, so that's actually good. Um, I, I'm really... Honestly, guys, I really like this gun. You know, um, it's a, it's definitely a fun shooter for sure. And of course, I still suck at shooting pistols. Um, I'm more of a rifle guy, as many of you know. Uh, but I'm gonna get more and more practice on this, more and more practice on my other pistols, and see how efficient um, of a shooter I can become with pistols. Um, definitely, when you buy something that you know you really like, you're gonna want to shoot it. And tell, I gotta tell you, I always love shooting this gun. Um, the, just the, the, the idea here that I can just, you know, dump shells out of my hand, it's like, you know, that that's that's a real cool factor winner right there. You know, it's like, ah, I got a mitt full of bullets, right? And um, that that makes the fun that much more, and re reloading them one at a time. Now, you can also reload these shells, too, um, while they're in the gun, you know. Uh, some people think it's easier, and that's fine. Um... But because I bought a lot of extra shells, you know, I preload them all on my belt because uh, I have a belt that holds the shells. And uh, I just prefer doing it that way, and I like the realism, like I said. Anyways, very good pluses. Uh, workmanship on this thing is just outstanding, too, by the way. I, I didn't mention that, but um, it has definitely got some outstandingly good, good workmanship to it. Um, but that's what you got. Um... Let me know what you guys think. Um, I would definitely, if I could get a blued version of this, I'd probably add a blued version to my collection as well. Um, you know, but this, right now, I've only seen this in the, in the nickel uh, finish, and it looks really nice. Like, even the camera does not do this thing justice. It is really super nice. You know, and to feel the weight of that thing, that's, that's meaty, you know? So... Anyway, that's it. That's all. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.